What's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about the Fuji X-T2 and what settings that I use. Before we start and look at the camera, it's time for a little magic. So what I'm going to do is pick out all the S's and the cards. Last but not least, there we go. So we've got the aces there, and what we're going to do is we've got the pack here, and turn them over, turn that over, and anywhere in the pack, these aces are just going to be put in, and also one in there. As you can see, there's all the four aces, and they're in the pack, just sort of going to be randomed in. What we'll do, just do a couple quick little shuffles. What we have here, Ace of Hearts, Ace of Spades, Ace of Clubs, and Ace of Diamonds. So what we're going to do now is just have a quick look through the settings that I've got set up on the Fuji X-T2. So as you can see here, I've gone for me image size, which is your large and 3.2 image quality. I save normal and raw, because I shoot with two cards, so the raw is always on the first card and the JPEG's on the second. With the raw recording, I've gone for uncompressed rather than lossless compressed. Um, there were some issues on the Mac, whereas if you use lossless, the image previews don't show up in Finder. Whereas if you use uncompressed, that shows up fine, so that's what I've gone for. Film simulation, I have classic chrome. So when I have JPEG straight from the camera, it's already got that nice edit on it. No grain effect, dynamic range, put on that 100%. And the white balance is, it all depends on the situation I'm shooting in, as I do a lot of studio shooting and the lights are 5600K, so I set my colour temperature to, or you can sort of mess around with it on if you're on location or other things like that. Highlight tone zero, shadow, colour, sharpness, noise reduction, long exposure noise reduction off, I have the lens modulator optimizer on, I use sRGB colour space and I don't have any pixel mapping. So the focus area, I have a single point and it's just a sort of small point there and then all I do is when I'm shooting I use this little knob on the back and select the focal point but I also have face and eye detection on so obviously when I'm taking a picture it'll use that to help us focus if I don't use the focal point. So back here the AF mode is on all and I also store the AF mode by orientation so if I was to turn the camera in portrait mode it would still it would have a separate autofocus I don't have the autofocus point display on because that's when you view your images back it shows you where you focused at. 91 points focus just so we can sort of be a bit more accurate. The face eye detection that's already on and manual focus system I've got that as standard. Don't have the focus check on however I have the spot AE and focus area turned on. Yeah and the drive settings I have the continuous low that is set to 4 frames a second, continuous high set to 8 frames a second so if I wanted a faster shutter speed then I'd just do that and it would take more bursts. Self time is off however if I need it on it's easy enough to turn on. Same with the interval time shooting for like your, um, just taking lots of pictures of a landscape and putting it all together in a, a slideshow. So for the shutter type I have the mechanical and electronic because you can use the electronic shutter which is great and it doesn't make a noise however when you're using the studio flashes it won't let you use the electronical shutter you have to use the mechanical so I just put it on mechanical and electronic for that way. Auto ISIS setting got on auto 1 and I have the default sensitivity is 200 and the maximum is 12,800 I also have the minimum shutter speed to 1/160, so using that I get a, a steady 
sort of sharp picture with doing it that because sometimes you can have your shutter speed down lower and you get blurry pictures and the things of that. Obviously you've got your wireless communication set up so I can um, transfer the pictures across when I'm shooting. If I just want to get a quick picture off the camera just to upload on Instagram or Facebook or whatever then I can do that fair enough. So we've got here the flash function setting that's just sort of manual and I don't really use the flash on it apart from a trigger because I use the flash off camera. Uh, movie mode I have it on 1080p for 59.94 frames a second because what I do is when you half that to the half speed in Adobe Premiere Pro it'll knock it down to 25 frames a second which is the UK sort of equivalent rather than the American 24 frames a second. Sometimes I'll do some shooting in 4K as well but uh, more often not it's just 1080p on the, the Fuji because I've got the X-T10 for the 4K. Same with the autofocus mode in movie I've got that set to area. Uh, the 4K movie output I've got as F-Log 50 and the full HD is F-Log 50. Um, right, so user controls, just sort of your general time setting and things like that. For the sound, I have the autofocus beep off. So if you want it to be sort of a bit incognito or get sick of the beep, then turn that off. Self timer beep, however, I have that up to the maximum. It's a lot easier if you set the camera up on the tripod. You you're going to take the selfie of yourself or whatever, then you can hear it. Same with the operational volume. I've got that turned off and the shutter volume turned off. Headphones volume, have that on 5 along with playback, so when you're listening back to the movies you've recorded, you can still hear it. The brightness for the viewfinder, I have this on 0 and 0, because more often than not I use the rear screen. So I don't really use the electronic viewfinder. I used to use it all the time when I had my Canon DSLR, but with this, the new Fuji, it sort of changed my photography style around. But what I do have is the LCD brightness up to 5 because when you're shooting in this daylight it's easier to see the screen and then obviously you just sort of when you're shooting in the studio you overcompensate so if it looks a bit bright on the screen it's generally okay you can you can get it across or you can just sort of dip your brightness down to zero and do it that way. Image display I have it on for 0.5 second because if I want to see the picture I can just press play rather than it being on all the time. Auto-rotate displays, I've got that set to 1, so when you're viewing pictures back you can twist your camera around to portrait and it'll, uh, the picture won't show up your portrait mode just down there, it'll show up all the way so you turn your camera and then you can see the full screen. So this is another good one, is preview exposure white balance in manual mode. So I'm in manual mode at the moment and when you're shooting in the studio Obviously, you need to see what's happening. So, as you can see there, and what I can do, just for an example, so if I go to F16, there, you see the screen's really dark. So, generally, when you're in the studio, you do your sentence to eliminate the natural light, which would be like this, and you can't really see. Especially if I just say there, shut speed up to a thousand, you can't see anything. What you can do is I've set up my quick buttons so it's, you can actually see the preview exposure in the screen. So there's it with manual mode on, so this is the picture that you would get. However, these ones here are showing you sort of. You, you can actually see what's happening through the screen rather than just having a black screen which comes in really handy when you're shooting in the studio um, Yeah, so framing guideline I've got that set to HD so when I'm taking a picture I have the letterbox bars there because I do a lot of cinematography photography so it's shooting 16 by 9 and that sort of thing and so going through here, my focus level setting, I've got that set on so when I'm sort of rotating the camera I can see when it's straight. 
And as you can see here, I've got all my buttons set up. So the button on the top here, the little function I've got set for wireless, and your yeah, face eye detection, and that's your, your preview in manual to change the classic Chrome to something else, to change the white balance. It's just sort of getting it to personal preference, like come from the DSLR, I use this for your um, auto focus. So you depress this, press this in, it focuses, and then you press the shutter button. Rather than having to push the shutter button halfway in to grab focus and then pressing it fully, I prefer using this back button as it's more like a DSLR. But again, it's down to personal preference. And the same here, I've got the ISO dial, so I'll go up to 25,600, and the lowest is that. Order that. Should auto focus, I've got that set to on. Shoot without card, I've got that set to off, but as I said, I always shoot with two cards. So I've got the two cards in there. I always have one for RAW, one for JPEG. And that way you always have a backup. So you can always, if your, your RAW card corrupts, then you've always got the JPEGs to sort of fall back on. Auto power off after two minutes, and performance, I've got that on boost. And that's about it. I've got the, the My Menu set up, so I can just quickly go in and change image size. So if I want to go from 3B2 to 16B9, or square format, which I quite often do. So if I'm shooting stuff for Instagram for the clothing, just chuck it in square format, and the JPEGs are already in square for Instagram. And it's got the classic Chrome edit, so it's spot on. And again with the shutter type, so I've got it set there, so I can just quickly go in electronic shutter and have that quiet shutter. And that's about it from me for the um, the walkthrough on this. So I hope you liked the video. hope it sort of helped you if you were trying to decide on some settings. And if you like what you saw, please give it a subscribe and a like below. And hopefully get some new content up soon. Till next time, ciao for now.